Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for insightful analysis and enlightening discussions. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for being with us. Well, we have a fantastic show for you today. We're going to talk about the U.S. housing industry, the real story. Look, obviously, the housing market impacts the economy in a very big way. Understanding the trends and forecasts can help us make better better business and investment decisions. Please welcome my first guest. It's Danielle Hale. She's the economist with the National Association of Realtors. Danielle, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. Uh, We appreciate it. And tell us, what's the latest on the housing market? Uh, How how are house home sales doing? Well, the most recent home sales data we have is from July, and it showed that uh, sales of existing homes continue to increase. They reached a pace of 5.59 million sales which is the highest pace of sales that we've seen in eight years. Um, so it's a very strong housing market this summer. Um, other signs of strength, this is the 10th consecutive month that we've seen year-over-year gains in the market. And this July, sales were up 10.3% from one year ago when sales were just 5.07 million. So good news on the existing home sales front. If we look at the region on a regional basis, there's some month-to-month variation. But from a year ago, all regions have higher home sales, and we've seen that for seven consecutive months. Now, looking at the new home sales data that was out uh, earlier this week, we saw that the new, ho- the new home sales market is following the same trend. They had a somewhat disappointing June, but in July, new home sales rose to 507,000. So it's above June's pace and also 25.8% above last July's pace, so a really strong rebound from a year ago. And same thing, you see slight differences from region to region, uh, but in new home sales, every region except the Midwest showed gains for the month and very strong gains over the year. Um, So it's a very strong housing market uh, as we're into the summer sales season. Okay. And how are these value increases in these homes, these prices, and how is it trending and how is it compared to, say, historic numbers? Uh, So home prices have been rising. Um, The median price of new homes is only up 2% in the most recent data, but um, NAR data on existing homes showed that the prices were up 5.6% from a year ago. Um, And we've seen consecutive uh, months of year-over-year home price gains for 41 months. That's nearly three and a half years. So the housing market is really climbing back. It depends on the market you're in, whether you're back up to peak prices or not. And it depends when we look at the national perspective which source data you're using, basically. Um, NAR showed that prices have reached back to the previous peaks in June, uh, but other data still shows that we're maybe a couple percent shy of the previous levels of prices. So um, on the whole, though, we've seen a tremendous amount of price recovery, and that's great news for current owners who are seeing equity being restored in their properties or new equity created. Yeah, that certainly is uh, good news for the economy overall. What about the new supply, the new home construction? Uh, what do you see there, the trends, and what do you expect moving forward? Um, so new home construction has um, shown some signs of life, though still not as much life as we'd like to see. Um, one of the things that we are constantly seeing in the existing home market is that the, uh, is that supply is low and one of the reasons we're seeing these price gains is that demand is larger than the supply that's available. And one of the things that could help that situation is new home construction. You might think, oh, well, if um, you know if people just put their homes in the market, then you have a greater supply of existing homes, so doesn't that solve the problem? And the answer is no, not really, because a lot of those people who are listing their homes to sell are current owners, and they're probably going to move into another owner-occupied home. So you really need new construction uh, to create some real addition to inventory uh, in the housing market. And, and that's something that we've seen sort of pick up a little bit, um, and it's moving in the right direction, but uh, still not quite back to where we need to be. I see. And new home sales certainly help the economy in, in lots of other ways, uh, uh, building these new, uh, new homes. What about the median sales price of a home today, uh, Danielle? How does that compare to, say, the median uh, home uh, value or price uh, back in 06 when the market was really hot? 
so as I mentioned, it depends on which data source you use. So the mm -hmm. NAR data um, shows that home prices in June uh, exceeded the peak price um, that we had seen before. Um, so according to our data, homes are back up to the peak price. Now, in some of the other data sources, there's uh, Case Shiller, CoreLogic, the Federal Housing Finance Agency has a home price index. So lots of different ways to measure the market. And some of them show that uh, prices are within a couple percent, anywhere from 2 to 5 percent, depending on the source of the data. Um, so in, in most markets, um, we're not quite there yet uh, to that peak price. Now, as I mentioned, it depends on the market. In some markets, home prices are up way above um, those previous peaks. So it really just depends on where you are and what the local fundamentals are. But from a national perspective, most markets are either there or pretty close. Okay. So if, if we have a uh, median price for the U.S. of, of at or, or above uh, the peak back in 06, and we have a fairly low level of new supply, what does that mean for future values moving forward? Right. With a low level of new supply, as long as we see continued demand, and we expect mm -hmm. that given the job growth and strength of the economy that we've had, that, that demand will continue to uh, be out there in the market. So we expect some further increases in prices. Um, now, it, it gets a little bit tricky as we get into this, you know, new levels of uh, record levels of prices, whether or not that demand will continue to exist. We could get into some affordability crunches for some buyers, and so that might uh, dampen demand somewhat. Um, but at this price level, for certain, we've continued to see strong demand, and that has tended to push prices higher. So the median price in June, for example, was 236300 um, and that is the all-time high um, since, we, since we started keeping track. The previous peak was in uh, 2006, as you mentioned, and the price was $230,400. So um, we're back up to that level uh, in the housing market, um, which is a great thing for owners, current owners. It's given them a lot of equity. Okay. Well, we're talking with Danielle Hale, economist with the National Association of Realtors, about the U.S. housing market. And I think it's interesting when you talk about affordability, you talk about pr median prices that are, are, are kind of, I guess, at record numbers, if you will. How is the, the, the values of these homes keeping up with the fundamentals of, of jobs and wages? Well, we've seen a lot of job growth in the last year. Um, so in the first half of the year, um, we had job growth that averaged over 200,000 a year. So uh, total new jobs were 1.3 million in the first half of the year. Um, and those jobs uh, fee enable some household formation that we probably haven't seen uh, in recent years. So uh, we won't have hard data on that for a little while, but we expect that uh, we'll see some new household formation. Uh, we've also seen incomes start to come back. They're, they're by no means roaring back, but they are doing better than they have done in years. Um, median earnings of employees, for instance, rose 2.1% in the second quarter, um, which is a noticeable improvement from what we've seen in the past. So um, the job growth and income growth that we've seen on a fundamental basis, I think, is really the big driver between or behind the housing market increases that we've seen this summer. Okay, so there's no concern right now then that the affordability issue with, with the wages not increasing as much as, as home prices are increasing. That's not an issue right now. But what about if uh, as interest rates increase? Uh, you know, we're all expecting interest rates to, to start <laughs> rising at some point, right? Or where do we go with affordability there? Yeah, certainly. Um, interest rates are expected to rise. Now, whether the events of this past week uh, delay that uh, inevitable rise a little bit or not, uh, we do expect that they are going to go up in the future. And when you're financing a home, as 90% of buyers do, um, the mortgage rate is a key determinant in, uh, in what happens as far as affordability. The mortgage rates are rising. Uh, homes become less affordable for buyers, and particularly for uh, first-time or you know, first-time trade-up buyers who tend not to have as much equity in their properties. And so those um, those entry-level buyers are the most affected when we see mortgage rates start to rise. Um, so that could uh, 
that could mean that as mortgage rates rise, we see a little bit of a slacking off in demand. Um, but at the same time, those fundamentals remain solid. Uh, I think that the rebound that we've seen in the housing market this summer is really due to job growth that we had before the first half of the year. I mentioned the, the strength of the job growth in the first half of the year. Uh, but there tends to be a bit of a lag between the job growth and the actual home purchase because uh, okay. in the financing right. process. And, and I want to hear more about that. We take a short break. We'll be right back with more on the U.S. housing market. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408-BULL. Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about the U.S. housing market, the real story. My guest is Danielle Hale. She's an economist with the National Association of Realtors. And, and Danielle, I think one question that my listeners might have on their mind is the impact of rising interest rates initially on the home buying market. Are there possibly a lot of buyers that are on the fence now when they start seeing interest rates start to climb a little bit that they may become more active? Yeah, that's certainly been the experience that we've seen in the past. Typically, um, after an initial rate increase, uh, we see a lot of those buyers who had been looking uh, make a quick decision um, instead of you know continuing to look, thinking, oh, well, you know, the rates are going to be the same. It's not a big deal. If I wait, I can wait for the next property. Um, but usually, as those rates start to move up, we see um, a big, a big surge of activity. Um, and the interesting thing is, as we enter this tightening cycle, uh, you know, it might be that um, that that pressure sort of remains in the housing market for those people who are looking. That the it might shorten the timeline um, of search as people get into the market and they know that uh, the interest rate pressure and trend is constantly on the upside. It might um, it might get them to think and think through their decision a little bit less potentially and act on it a little bit quicker than once they come to the point where they're ready to actually purchase a home. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, we've been hearing about rates uh, rising for so long. It's like now it's like, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll believe it when we see it. But I think another question my listeners may have for you is, is how does the economy in China uh, and the U.S. stock market, how much do those types of, of things have an impact on the U.S. housing market? Um, well, the uh, I, I guess for the decline in the U.S. stock market, that may create some uncertainty um, for some buyers who are in the market. Just in general, uh, big economic events like that um, tend to lead to, uh, you know, a little bit of uncertainty. Uh, but sometimes that uncertainty can be a positive thing for mortgage rates. We talked about how, in general, the expectation is that uh, mortgage rates are going to go up, but they tend to sort of take a pause and sometimes move a little bit lower when you have a lot of uncertainty in the market like that. Um, as far as concrete impacts, uh, we find that 9% of buyers indicate that they make a down payment um, from selling stocks or bonds, and another 9% indicate that they use 401k pension funds, including um, some sort of a loan. So um, it could be that for some people, this market disruption came at a really bad time, um, but generally, uh, generally, we shouldn't see a huge impact, especially if it's a relatively short-lived and financial situation only. And as far as the situation in China, we do have some international buyers, and their uh, their significant portion of existing home sales, about four percent total. Um, but you know, as disruptive as the stock market decline in China has been, if you look on a year-over-year basis, the market there is still up pretty substantially. So we think that this. Uh, this uh, decline that's happened recently will affect only a really small portion of uh, investors, and so it should not have broader effects as long as it, you know, remains relatively contained, which is what we expect so far. Okay, so with the economy um, problems in China, might that help U.S. home sales or maybe more Chinese and, and other foreign investors uh, looking at the U.S. housing market as a safe haven? Yeah, certainly. It, it remains um, a safe haven option for 
investors around the world, um, and even in the most recent year, you know, purchases of invest of U.S. real estate by foreigners. China is one of the top five countries um, of whose investors are purchasing in the U.S. So it will continue to be an important outlet for those investors. And they're buying expensive homes, aren't they? They're not buying the starter homes. Yeah, that's right. So um, the overall average U.S. price is about 256000 That's different than the median that we talked about before, just slightly different math. Um, but on average, foreign clients are buying nearly a $500,000 house. So it's nearly twice the price of the average U.S. house. And are they buying houses and condos or, or more of one or the other? Um, they're pretty active in all types of um, purchase markets. Um, so it depends on the specific market that they're in, but um, we see them pretty active in both types of housing market. And what states do you find foreign investors most active? Uh, I, I tend to think of, of Florida and maybe California. Where are they active? Yeah, they are in the larger states. So Florida, mm-hmm. California, which are large population states, large volume states in general. Um, also, Texas and Arizona are uh, where we see the biggest uh, portion of international sales. In fact, those four states uh, alone counted uh, accounted for half of the international sales that we saw. So foreigners are purchasing property nationwide, so every state has some foreign activity. Okay. All right, so we have foreign investors. You know, we have the, uh, the funds that have come in and bought a lot of houses and, and are renting them out and holding them, it seems, uh, for the most part. You know, and then we had some uh, governmental uh, incentives uh, for buyers to, to buy homes. What do you say to folks who say, hey, maybe because of these reasons, uh, there's a housing bubble. I mean, the prices are, are historically at the top. Uh, what do you say to those people? Well, I think there, there aren't any new incentives for, um, for buyers to get into the mm-hmm. existing home market or to the housing market. Um, so if most of the government programs that are in place have been in place for a very long period of time, I'm thinking specifically of the mortgage interest deduction that's uh, been in the tax code since its inception. Um, so I don't think that you can tie those particular incentives to any specific um, gyrations in the housing market. And I think that they do a lot to open up opportunities to potential buyers. And um, so I, I think that um, those are essentially a, a positive for the housing market. Okay. So the amount, large amount of investor purchases, whether it's funds or, or foreign investors, uh, you don't think has a, has a big impact on, on the values? or as far as the, a bubble that some people might think is out there or be worried about at least? Well, I think that those, those funds and the foreign investors, I mean, they're purchasing uh, as an investment, so I think they're going to make sure to uh, look at the fundamentals of the market and make sure to take care of their investment. And I think, you know, once it gets to a point where the prices really – are quite high, which maybe we're at right now, it might make sense for some of those purchasers to sell some of those properties and realize the gains that they have. And so that could be a potential source of additional supply to the market other than the new construction. Okay. We're short on the break, but uh, what price range of homes are are most active and sought after right now? We've really seen uh, the biggest activity in the above median prices. Last year, it was in the upper, upper tier. This year, we're seeing more evenly spread in the median and all above median prices. The only place that activity is lagging is in the lowest tier, and that's probably because we see less importance and fewer opportunities in distressed properties. Okay, and so the future, you're bullish on the future of the housing market then? I think the fundamentals are strong. We talked about job growth and income growth. I think that the that those fundamentals are strong enough to weather the mortgage rate increases that we all know are coming um but only time will tell (laughs) well that's good news and it sounds like you gave some more um, astute information for investors buy low sell high right right yeah danielle thanks for joining us today we appreciate it yep happy to be here well stay tuned we'll have more on the u.s housing market this is the commercial real estate show we'll be right back 
The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R E A L N E X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit excelligent.com. That's X C E L I G E N T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit commercialsearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.